Hi and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Databricks Unity Catalog on AWS from scratch. Unity Catalog is a data governance product from Databricks. Uh, it offers a suite of different tools and aspects to control access to your data, your dashboards, your AI. Um, there's a lot of things that are kind of built in today as of the time of this video and a lot of things that Databricks is adding slowly over time. So look forward to additional things being governable under this product in the future. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that you've already gotten your sales pitch on Unity Catalog and you're really interested in just trying it out. So that can be a bit complicated. Uh, you can look through a lot of the documentation on Unity Catalog and get a pretty good understanding of how that security model works. But I believe that it'll make a lot more sense hands-on and this video is for those of you that would like to see a walkthrough of how to do just that. So the first thing we're going to do is create an S3 bucket to represent the centralized cloud storage location for our lake house. So I'm going to go into the account console and hit create bucket and then we'll give our bucket a name and I like to name mine with the account ID for my Databricks account and then I'll say Metastore and Lake House and the region that I'm going to deploy this in. Now Databricks only allows you to create a Metastore per region. So since I actually already have one in US East 1, I'm going to select US East 2. Make sure to correct that in the name. Now the rest of these settings you want to leave default, um, including the object ownership, blocking public access, disabling bucket versioning, and the encryption. Now with encryption, if you wanted to use your own customer managed KMS key, then you can select the second option and create a KMS key to use for that. I'm going to be using the default, which is Amazon managed S3 encryption keys. And then we'll hit create bucket. And it looks like that bucket name is a little too long. So we'll just delete Metastore from this and try that instead. Now we have our S3 bucket created successfully. We are going to need to modify something on this in a moment, but we'll come back to that because next we need to create an IAM role. So now that we have our cloud storage location created, we also need to create a role that's going to allow Databricks to actually essentially reach into our account and access the data in this S3 bucket. So this is also known as federating access one account such as Databricks' account, will have an IAM role, and then that role will actually assume a role in our account. So we are able to give Databricks access to do that, and then we can control exactly what they can access in our account from the role that we create. Hopefully that made sense. So we're going to go to the IAM console in AWS and click Create Role. And then for the trust, policy which is controlling who can access this role we're going to use custom trust policy and here is where we're going to paste in the policy that's required by Databricks and so you can see here this is actually Databricks's production unity catalog master role and so that's the the role in Databricks's account it's going to be assuming this role that we're in the process of creating and then from that role that's what's going to give it S3 permission to read our actual cloud files or write files. So we're going to leave this line exactly as it is. And then this second line, this is actually, this is an interesting one because uh, Databricks also requires you to make this role self-assuming. So what that means is the I'm role that we're creating, we're allowing Databricks' role to assume it, but we also need it to be able to assume itself. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, uh, which can be a bit frustrating, but what you'll want to do is just remove this line for now. And we'll come back to this because we don't actually have the IAM role ARN for this role yet. This role doesn't exist until we've created it. So we'll have to come back to it and do it in a two-step phase. Next, just replace this placeholder value below with your Databricks account ID and this is just qualifying that operation so when Databricks's account assumes this role it only works when the external ID matches our Databricks account number. Hit next and we're ready to select a IAM policy. So for this we can hit create policy and it'll open a new tab. 
This will allow us to go and define the policy and then come back to the role and select that new policy. And I'm going to select JSON because again, Databricks has a template that you can just paste in here. And so for this, we're going to take the very first statement and we're going to update it with the name of our bucket. This is actually the statement that's giving the S3 permissions like read and write to our S3 bucket. So go back here, copy your bucket name, and then just fill that in for this placeholder. And if you're wondering why there are two lines that are almost identical, just note that one of them has a trailing slash star and the other does not. That's because this one is for object level permissions and this one is for bucket level permissions. So you do need both, just wanna call that out. Next, since I use the default Amazon managed encryption keys, I actually don't have any KMS key that I need to authorize it to, so I can remove this block entirely. And lastly, because of that self-assuming aspect that we talked about before, there is a statement that has to say this role does declare that it has access to assume itself. But again, the role doesn't exist yet, so we can't actually create this statement. So if we tried to, you would get an error saying that there's a malformed uh, principal ID or something of that nature. So just take that out for the time being and we'll come right back once we've built the role. Next, and just give your policy a name. So we'll say lake house data access US East 2 and create policy. Great, so now that we have our policy created, we can go and attach it to the role in the create role page that we left in the middle of. So going back to that, we're still in the create role dialog. So if I hit refresh now, I should be able to search for the policy that we just created. And there it is. So select that policy and hit next. And then we can just give our role a name. Okay, and then hit create role. Great, now our role exists. So now that it exists, we can finish up the self-assuming permissions that we were working on. And so we're going to need this I am role ARN. And the first thing that I'll do is modify the trust relationship and just hit edit trust relationship. And in addition to Databricks's role being able to assume this, we're going to allow our own account or this role specifically access to assume this. So make that an array and then add your ARN as the second element. And we're done with that. So now the other thing is the policy. So if you remember, we were working on that and we had to remove the last statement. So I still have that open over here. I'll just go over to that tab and click edit. And so we need to add a statement that's going to allow the assume role permission to this I am role ARN. And that'll look something like this where I have the action STS assume role, the resource that we're allowing it to assume is this role, and we can click next. Congratulations, you have successfully built your IAM role that governs access to the S3 bucket and allows Databricks to actually federate in to this role and therefore access the data in our S3 bucket. The last thing that we're gonna do is we've managed the IAM role side of things but the way S3 permissions work, we also need to declare on the bucket which roles should have access to it. So to do this, go back to your bucket in the AWS S3 console and go to permissions. And then you'll want to hit edit on bucket policy. So I'm going to click add new statement on the right and we'll select the S3 service, all actions, and then in the resource array to copy the, your bucket ARN and we want to put that here and then we also want to place a second line with that slash star to say that for the objects all the s3 object permissions this bucket policy is allowing it to do things to all the objects in this bucket so the principle or the thing that we are going to allow access to the bucket from the buckets policy perspective is the i am role that we created we can just say the principle is an aws principle and this is the arn all right, so hit save changes there. Now all of the permissions in our cloud are tied together and aligned. The bucket is saying it's okay with this IAM role having full access to the bucket and its objects. And then similarly, the IAM role declares that it is okay with having permissions 
to that S3 bucket and all of its objects. And of course, Databricks is authorized to assume and use this IAM role, therefore having the necessary permissions in our account. Right, at this point, we are ready to move to the Databricks console and leave the AWS side behind for a moment. Simply go to accounts.cloud.databricks.com and sign in with your login. So in the data tab is where you manage metastores for your account. And again, like I said earlier, you can only have a metastore per AWS region. And you can see I already have a metastore created for US East 1. So we're going to be creating one for US East 2 now, or the Ohio region, following everything that we've done so far. So click Create Metastore, and then we'll give our Metastore a name, and I'll just say Lake House Demo, uh, or Lake House East 2, that seems more appropriate. All right, and then the region, of course in my case, is US East 2. Uh, this is the region of the S3 bucket. So if you created your S3 bucket in a different region, just make sure that this matches the region that you used. Next we have the S3 bucket path and the IAM role ARN. So I'm going to paste that IAM role ARN and then likewise I'm going to go back and copy my S3 bucket name. And this is the S3 bucket path. So you want to put that S3 prefix in there. Hit create. So this next screen is where you would actually assign the Metastore to your workspaces. Now in my case, I already have a Metastore assigned to my workspace, so I'm actually going to skip this step. You can always come and do this afterwards, so don't be afraid of missing it in this screen. So once you have created your Metastore and you've assigned it to a workspace, you can use that immediately. So if you switch into your workspace UI and go to the Data tab, you'll see different catalogs on the left and of course we see our old Hive Metastore as well. So from the catalogs page, I can click create catalog, give my catalog a name such as dev. Great, now we have a dev catalog and you see that it automatically creates two schemas inside of that called default and the information schema. And so we can create additional schemas. I can go to create schema and I might create one called uh, UC demo hit create so now we have a schema and then lastly you can create tables so let's say I were to go to the SQL editor and we'll run some queries to create a table in that catalog and schema and then we'll insert some data to it and see what that looks like so on the left here I can if I want to go over to the catalog and the schema that I created and I can say create table dev dot uc demo dot scores. And then I'll give my table a schema. We'll say user ID is a integer and the score is a long. And then maybe we have a inserted date as well just to represent the date that this was inserted and we could also partition by that. So let's add a partition by clause to say that we're partitioning by date and then perhaps a comment just to finish things up. So user scores sounds pretty good for my fictional table and then we will run this. Okay, our query completed. So it created the table successfully and you see the table automatically appear over in the table or schema browser. So what we've created here is what's called a managed table. And this means that we did not specify a cloud storage location specifically for this table. We actually want it to be managed by the catalog. And so if you describe using the extended uh, keyword on your table, we'll see that this table is actually uh, store it in this specific S3 location that we were looking at. So these long numbers here are identifiers that were generated for the table. And then you also see the type is specified as managed. So if this were an unmanaged table, you would see external in this field instead of managed. So now likewise, let's say we inserted some data into our table. And we'll say user ID one, maybe got a score of a thousand, uh, inserted at the current date. 
and let's take a look at our S3 bucket. So if I refresh now, I see I'm looking at the delta log. I can see another commit did take place. And then I can also go back up to the actual table folder and you'll see a new folder, uh, inserted date equals today's date. So that's because if you recall, we partitioned our table by the inserted date. So it's gonna automatically create a uh, structure there in S3 and then we see our data file. So this data file would actually contain the row that I just inserted. Lastly, if you're exploring this in the data explorer or the data tab over here, keep in mind that it'll also show up. So if I navigate back to the dev catalog and the UC demo schema, and I'll see my scores table, this will visually, this will show me the schema. This will show me the details of the table. So I can click on that and see the same information that I was seeing with the describe extended statement. So I can tell that it's in this meta store. I can tell this is the ID that was generated for the table. It's a managed table and here's the storage location. From here, you can really start to try out all the different features of Unity Catalog and see the benefits of them. For example, if I had a dashboard or a notebook or a workflow job that were querying and using this table, I can use the lineage feature to see what upstream and downstream things are using this table and this is a really really cool feature there's a lot of others so I recommend uh, taking this example and just exploring the different features of unity catalog with your own data great so that is a step-by-step -step on how to set up unity catalog from Databricks on AWS I hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to see more about unity catalog and its features please like this video and leave a comment below thanks for watching